Have you ever felt uh, like your story just isn't keeping readers on the edge of their seats? Well, that's because it may lack some tension and release. Uh, so basically, by the end of this video, I uh, maybe I'll show you how to manage the rhythm of your story to prevent burnout or boredom by adding that uh, sort of tension and release that is found in uh, a lot of books, uh, specifically thrillers. But more importantly, it could be an epic fantasy. It could be in romance whatever the case may be. So today we are going to go over uh, tension and release and exploring basically how to, how, how exploring the rule of tension and release and how to create that balance between high tension and moments of release. So, uh, but if you don't know, tension and release are the push and pull that keep readers infested. It's the thing that makes them go, Ooh, and then goes, oh, okay. Right. Uh, all right. Because without tension, your story will lack stakes. It will lack, uh, uh, you know, that will they, won't they? It'll lack that. Uh, are they in danger? Right. That feeling that like what is going to happen? But more importantly, without release, your your readers will get exhausted. So if it's always up here or it's always rising. It's very difficult to get through that book. So you need moments of respite, et cetera. So one, one helpful tip for that uh, before we go forward is uh, think of your stories emotionally and uh, your story's emotional intensity like a rubber band. Okay. As tension builds, you stretch it, but stretch too far and the band breaks. And that's ultimately saying overwhelming your readers with constant high tension and you'll lose them. Okay. Uh, I do want to set some expectations about this lesson, uh, but it will help you learn how to identify tension and release in your own writing. If it's there or not there, uh, you know, we'll go over some common uh, things about it. All right, let's do a walkthrough. I'm going to work on three main beats for this. I'm going to create tension, then I'm going to release uh, that tension, and then I'm going to add a touch of something, something afterwards. All right. So let's put that on the screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is no tension. I'm going to show you what a, a moment looks like. I'm going to write out a moment of no tension. All right. Okay. Okay. So let's see. All right. Let's do this. Uh, floor. Floor, ooh, huh. floor, ascent, lights buzzed above as Sarah. Sarah walked quickly. By the way, if anyone has better names I could use in future uh, things, just feel free to send them to me. Uh, so I'm going to have a running down like a like a hallway or something. I'm going to make this more of a modern day. So uh, let's see. Fluorescent lights buzzed above as Sarah walked quickly. Uh, down the hallway, huh? Eh? 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 And then uh, let's say, let's add some audio, audio. Let's uh, give it some immersion here. So, uh, footsteps uh, tapping against. Let's give it some space and uh, recognize the, sp the area, you know, like give it some shape. So, let's uh, specifically laminate flooring. Okay. That's a, that's in offices, right? Um, she's doing something. We got to give her a task, right? So she's uh, she checked she checked the room numbers as she went, finally reaching room. Num, 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 num. Let's do twenty three because that's evil. On the floor fourth, let's say the fourth floor. <coughs> so she can't just jump out the window. Uh, let's see. Uh, pushing through the door. Uh, let's let's add some filler words so I can do some editing. So she saw the bomb resting in the center of the room. All right. It ticked quiet, cool, quietly. Do it. All right. So. There you go. All right. So let's read this. Fluores fluorescent, fluorescent lights buzzed above as Sarah walked quietly, uh, quickly 
down the hallway, her footsteps tapping against the laminate flooring. She checked the room numbers as she went, finally reaching room 23 on the, the fourth floor. Pushing through the door, she saw the bomb resting in the center of the room. It ticked quietly. This has no tension. It's not building up anything. It's more or less a series of events. So let's take this down to tension. Tension! All right. Uh, yeah, no, I, yeah. Yeah, no, I don't need to be on there. It looks looks terrible. All right, so let's add let's add some tension. So, um, fluorescent lights. Oh, here we go. Here we go. This will create atmosphere. Flickered. Fluorescent lights flickered with a thick buzz. Yeah. Under. I don't really like quickly. Under Sarah's. But quick. I still could do quick. Quick footsteps. Footsteps. Uh, tapping out. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to make, I'm trying to give it atmosphere. Flourish of high pitched pelts from the laminate floor. Yeah, because this is this seems a little the laminate floor. The laminate flooring. Um, let's give her a sense of movement. So, uh, and also use a word that um openly has some tension in it. So we're going to say raced. So instead of saying she checked, we're going to show. So she raced. Let's see. She raced down the hallway. Okay. All right. And as you can see, by the way, the way I'm doing this is like, uh, I'm like, fluorescent lights flickered with a thick buzz under Sarah's quick footsteps, tapping out flourish. I'm, I'm making every moment kind of feed off the next one. So her footsteps. So what did her footsteps do? They, well, they tapped out a uh, flourish of pitched pelts from the laminate flooring. So I just described the tunnel, the hallway. So let's get her in the hallway. So I made it more, pro, more. Ag she raced down the hallway, right? She raced down the hallway. Uh, the room, the room. Let's see. She raced down the hallway. Oh, sweating with frantic glances at each door number. All right. Now, let's add a beat. Let's add the beat. Let's say a reaching room. Number 23. On the fourth floor, Sarah burst, a oh, busted, a oh, busted burst, burst, burst. I like that through the door. I like that. Uh, boop. And I could get rid of this because this was a weak sentence. Eh. She, Sarah, busted, burst. <coughs> Uh, you know what? I think I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go to busted. Busted through the door. No, nah, burst, burst, burst. Sarah burst through the door. Uh, let's see. <sighs> oh, let's give some. Uh, let's give some character to the bomb. So settled, calm. I can't spell my fingers on. Okay. Settled calm. Yeah. Like a beast in hibernation. A gentle click pulsed. Oh, yeah. From the massive bomb in the room center. All right. I like that. Okay. Now I want to get. I want to add one more movement to it. All right, as you can see already, I took this one very standard, and I'm giving, 
I'm giving moments within that original no tension some time to breathe, okay? Um, oh, I could get rid of pushing door, resting in the sun, and it, all right, let's talk about it ticking. It ticked. Let's add some, uh, the clock ticked almost mocking her shape. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah unsure so now we're inside her head right so let's get inside her head so unsure which wire to cut she pulled at each one to get a better 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 view in the brightness of her phone so this is going to be modern right so phones flashlight i think that's better than it tick quietly all right so there we go um how badly did I spell everything? Let's see. Tapping out a flourish of high pitched, high pitched. Okay. Spell check. All right. So let's. Uh, Let's look at this now. Let's see how the tension is built, okay? Fluorescent lights flickered with a thick buzz under Sarah's quick footsteps, tapping out a flourish of high-pitched pelts from the laminate flooring. So already we've created some atmosphere, um, okay? There's a sense of, uh, of uh, you know, chaos. She raced down the hallway, sweating with frantic glances at each door number. So we know she's searching, right? Uh, but instead of saying she's searching, right? Because in the original, uh, the original, I had it basically saying, uh, what did I say? Uh, she checked the room numbers as she went. So instead of saying, instead of telling, I'm now showing her checking. She raced down the hallway, sweating with frantic glances at each door number. Okay, that is better showing. All right. Then reaching room door, she burst through the door. Oh, reaching room number 23 on the fourth floor, Sarah burst through the door, settled calm like a beast in hibernation. A gentle click pulsed from the massive bomb in the room center. All right, and then the clock ticked, almost mocking her, shaking hands. Unsure which wire to cut, she pulled at each one to get a better view in the brightness of her phone's flashlight. Uh, we gave this some uh, personification, right? We gave, uh, we gave the bomb personality, okay? So there's a lot of tension here, right? Now, obviously, we want to release that tension. Oh, this, this is all tension, by the way. Sorry about that. Now, before we go into the release, let's let's see what we could do with no release. So we'll see the scene with no release and take it from there, okay? Let's see. Um, so now she's at the bomb. So if she's at the bomb, let's write it with no release. So Sarah, let's say she's like near it, knelt beside it. And examine the wires. Oh, phone's flashlight to get a better look. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because in the original, there's no flashlight. So we're just going to add the flashlight. So there's some continuity and consistency. All right. Uh, oh, she picked up one of the thicker wires uh, holding. <laughs> her wire cutters ready she's ready to make a decision uh, after a moment Oof. that's always a we like uh, that's that's the author's uh death sentence right there it's, uh, sentence not sentence but sentence uh after a moment or a with a brief a brief moment Switch to a different. What does she switch to? She switched to switch to a different wire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wire and snipped it. 
All right. So there she goes. Sarah knelt, 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 knelt. You can write it both ways, but one is English and one is American. Let me see. Uh, knelt, knelt. Let me see that real quick. Knelt and knelt. Oh, in UK English, knelt is standard, though knelt is still acceptable. In US English, both knelt and knelt are commonly used. Oh, all right. But knelt is more common. See? Look, even I'm learning every day. All right, so Sarah knelt beside it and examined the wires, shining her phone's release to get a better look. She picked up one of the thicker wires, holding her wire cutters ready to make a decision. After a moment, she switched to a different wire and snipped it. Again, there's still no tension, and there's still no release. It's just things are happening, but nothing is happening. That's a term we use a lot on here. So, yes, something is happening. But nothing is happening. Okay. So let's go to release. Let's also bring this down. All right. Let's turn this into something else. Okay. Let's do actual release. Let's add some release. Um. Uh, I don't really, uh, I don't think we need to say that she, let's just get to the action. Let's, uh, let's just say Sarah grabbed one of the thick, yeah, let's just get into it. The thicker wires and placed her wire cutter around. It. Again, this is showing. Uh, no, this is, this is a, this is telling. She grabbed one of the thicker wires and placed her wire cutter around. That's right. So she knelt beside and examined the wires, shining her phone's flip. We already have this above in the uh, tension thing. So, um, let's see. And we already said thicker wire, so we got rid of this, right? Grabbed has a little bit picked. Grabbed one's a little bit more action packed. Holding her wire cutter is ready to make a decision. Uh. All right, let's give her let's give her a little let's go inside Sarah by showing her her uh, fear and hesitation. She closed. We're going to add a little tension to finish off the release. So she closed her eyes as the, I don't really like numbers, but I mean, as but um, numbers on the clock reached uh, the single digits. Um. Sarah closed her eyes. The numbers on the clock. There we go. The numbers on the clock reach the single digits. Now let's give the clock some movement. Shall we? Shall we? Eight, seven, six. Yeah, I like it. All right. Uh, after a moment, she switched it. I gotta just rewrite that whole thing. Hand refused to let uh, her hand refused to let her cut it. Oh shit! Five, four, 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 three. Okay. Sarah looked down, grabbing, <laughs> grabbing. Jesus, the wire to its left. And cut it, cut it. The clock reached one. Now, do you see I was about to write as again? As a writer, you got to remember it's okay to kind of get that out, but like go back and fix things occasionally. You know, I, I had to give me a Sarah looked down, grabbing the wire to its left and cut it. And. Uh, Bright red, red numbers on the clock reached one. Okay. Um. Let's see. Let's add a little bit more. Let's let's actually have her release. 
So let's have her emotionally or physically show that. So she, uh, let's say she embraced the fall into a collapsing relief. All right. The weight, the right, <laughs> the weight of the bomb lingered only a foot away from her. Her exposed skin from her neck. Uh, absorbed the coolness of the flooring. As a cool. Uh, her exposed, okay, um, put away from her. How about the cool, the coolness of the flooring? Yeah. Let's get rid of that. Absorbed. Away. We don't need to have her skin. Let's see, away. Some of her fear. Yeah, like that. All right, there we go. There we go. All right, so this has a release. It adds a little bit more tension, but then it has really good. It has a strong, direct release. Sarah grabbed one of the thick rights. Jesus. Fires. All right, one second. Let me do the thing. Excellent. All right. Sarah grabbed one of the thicker wires and placed her wire cutter around it. She closed her eye. She cl hey, hey. She closed her eyes. The numbers on the clock reached the single digits. Uh, she closed her eyes. Uh, she closed her eyes. And the numbers on the clock. Uh, and the clock. Uh, yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, nah, 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 nah. All right, let's do this. See, this is how we edit. All right. She, okay. Sarah grabbed one of the thicker wires and placed her cutter around it. She closed her eyes and the clock reached the single digits. Eight, seven, six. Her hand refused to let her cut it. Okay, so that's me. That's me saying instead of writing her instinct stopped her. That's me saying her hand refused to let her cut it. Five, four, three. Sarah looked down, grabbing the wire to its left and cut it. The bright red numbers on the clock reached one. She embraced the fall into a collapsing relief. The weight of the bomb lingered only a foot away from her. The coolness of the flooring absorbed away some of her fear. So this creates that release it has a lot a lot more release than say this sarah knelt beside it and examined the wire shining her phone's flashlight to get a better look she picked up one of the thicker wires holding her wire cutters ready to make a decision after a moment she switched to a different wire and snipped it and this is an example again something is happening clearly something she is kneeling she is examining the wires she's using her phone flashlight she picked one of the wires and then she's like, wait a minute, let me, let me, uh, let me think about this. And then she's like, all right, I'll switch to another one and I will cut it. Right. So something is happening, but nothing is happening. We're not experiencing the moment through her emotional perspective, right? Her emotional experience of her making choices or reacting, et cetera, et cetera. Now let's do this. I like to create a new, we're going to create an ebb and flow, a movement, a wave. So it was, Build the tension, release, and now let's add a new tension, okay? All right, but this will have no tension. I'm going to write a moment that has no tension, okay? So afterwards, let's, let's say, <laughs> let's say this is a, yeah, you know, obviously. Afterwards, Sarah, let's get her home, walk through her front door and 
called the Chief. I give an update. Uh, give an update on the situation. She lay down. Let's get her on the couch, right? Mm, yeah, get her on the couch. Let in the events of the day. Uh, let's go with Faye just for the fun of it. A buzz from her phone drew her attention. Okay. She checked it. Of course. If you notice, I'm using she. Like, I'm just, you don't, you don't really use that. Like, you want to change things up. She checked. Uh, she checked the message on the screen. Uh, this is only the beginning. This is only the beginning, Sarah. That's me if I was the, uh, the Dark Lord. All right, so afterwards, Sarah walked through the... I already know what I want to change, but... Afterwards, Sarah walked through her front door and called the chief to give an update on the situation. Uh, she laid down on a couch, hanging up her phone, and, le and letting the events of the day fade. A buzz from her phone drew her attention. She checked. Again, this feels like a checklist. I think I've talked about this in other videos. Like if if a pro sounds like a checklist, it's not having really a cause and effect. It's a this and this and this, right? So um this happens. Uh, there Sarah walked through her front door and call and then this happens, called the chief to give an update on the phone and then she laid down on the couch and then she hung up the phone and then she let the events of the day's face and then a buzz from the phone drew her attention and then right so it's and then and then and then you never you never really want it to feel like a then and then then you want it to have cause and effect uh if, even just reading this uh sarah grabbed one of the thicker wires and placed her cutter around it which led to her she closed her eyes and the clock reached the single digits. So we're showing an emotional reaction to uh, through the physical uh, of her grabbing the wire. Like, is this the right wire? You know, eight, seven, six. Her hand refused to let her cut it. OK, five, four, three, right. And Sarah looked down, grabbing the wire to its left and cutting it. The bright red numbers. Right. So we're 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 attaching to the end of each sentence. Okay, she embraced the falling into the weight of the bomb lingering. Okay, all right, let's do a new tension. Let's do new tension. I already know what I want to do. So let's get rid of the phone call, as in, like, oh, wait, let me get it. Boop. Okay, so this is going to be new tension. Let me, uh, let me do this. There we go. Okay, this is going to be new tension. And I'm going to get rid of the phone call. That was the first thing I thought of. But I'm going to have the phone call, but I'm going to, like, end it, like, I'm just going to end it, like, right in the beginning. So, uh, walking through the, her front door, she think, sorry about that, the phone before hanging it up. That's a fluid sentence. Done. All right. Let's get right to her on the couch now. So, Sarah laid down on the couch breathing out the events of her job right okay i should say actually experience yeah the events of her experience with the bomb you can do that uh she lay down on her couch hanging up her phone and letting the events of the day fade breathing out the events of her experience uh, Bring out the events of her stress. Yeah. A softening respite. All right. And then uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, okay. All right. Da -da -da. Phone, a phone. We got a buzzed, buzz, nudging her from the half rest in the comfort of her closed eyes. Right, uh, lifting, 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 lifting. Yeah, lifting the phone 
into a fo oh wait no nah, 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 let's just go more proactive uh she lifted uh her phone into the focus of her eyes in the dark the darkness of her living room it's like let's let's we're creating ambience and uh you know immersion it's light took a moment for her to adjust uh, opening the text message opening the message this is only the beginning beginning sarah Dun, dun, dun. All right, I like that better than this. Okay, so there we go. And if you notice, I created beats as well, right? So pros, that's the pacing rhythm as beats. So walking through a front door, she thanked the chief on the phone before hanging it up. Sarah lay down on the couch, breathing out the events of her stress, uh, breathing out the events, uh, breathing out the stress, breathing out the stress. Breathing out the day's stress in a softening respite. Okay. Her phone buzzed because this is a new movement. Now I'm nudging. All right, let's do this first. Ding, 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 Okay. Walking through a front door, she thanked the chief on the phone. Did I spell chief or chef? I think I did chief, right? Oh, yeah, chief. Hey, chief. Uh, all right. She uh, thanked the chief on the phone before hanging it up. Sarah laid down on the couch, breathing out the day's stress in a softening respite. Her phone buzzed, nudging her from the a half rest uh, from her, nudging her from... Nudging her from the half breast. Uh, from the comfort of her closed eyes. Resting eyes. She lifted her phone into the focus. In uh, into the focus. Uh, she lifted her phone into f the focus of darkness against her sight. Uh, she lifted her phone into the focus of darkness against her sight. It's like it took a moment for her to just... Uh, okay, opening the mess. Yeah, there you go. All right, so there's new tension, but it's not, by the way, the tension is not as great as the bomb. It's just enough to create like a, a slight rise. And that's that's the important element here is the rhythm is we have high tension because she's like searching for the bomb. She finds the bomb. Oh, my God, there's a bomb. And then there's release. She actually deactivates the bomb. And then she gets home. And then it's like there's more to come, right? But it's not as great of the stakes are not as high as uh as the original bomb moment okay so there you go real time examples all right potential let's get back to me boom potential pitfalls pacing imbalance too much tension without release feels relentless too much release and your story drags so pacing is important and part of what i just did with pacing is uh as you can see, I created rhythm. If we go back, I created rhythm by breaking up. So instead of it being like one big sentence, like the, not one big sentence, one big passage, this would be three passages long. I actually broke the first passage up into three passages. So it has a rhythm. The, the lengths of each passage is different. And then this, as you can see, I broke this up into rhythm. Doom, 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 right? I could have just did one long passage, but I didn't. And then, uh, then this has to. So that also helps keep that in mind when working on uh, creating tension and release, right? 
Um, predictability, avoid predictable cycles. Make sure your tension comes from unexpected places, keeping your readers guessing. So in an example, uh, she got a phone call saying that this isn't the first one. That's an unexpected uh, tension. It's like, oh, hey, we're uh, so the, was Sarah the one who was targeted to be a part of this? Or because Sarah was there and stopped the bomb that now they have an interest in Sarah. But ultimately, um, you want the tension and release to always feel natural to the character's motivations. Um, but also you want the characters to feel like they're involved with the tension and release. As if they're a part of it and it's not just them doing things and then ultimately uh, things happening to them. You want them to make ten choices. You want them to have an emotional reaction to things. And by the way, when I say emotional reaction, I don't always mean like, oh, my God, I'm so angry. Or uh, this is terrible. It could be happiness. I'd be like, oh, this is, I, I, I can't believe, the, what, a, what a surprise, you know. So that's important. Let's do a, a real quick uh, ten, uh, exercise for you guys, uh, for everyone that's listening. Um, now, remember, uh, just just to kind of summarize, give you some insight into what, what this lesson is basically saying. Tension tension and release are the heartbeat of a story, okay? And you want to alternate between high-stakes moments and quieter scenes. Uh, this helps keep uh, your readers basically emotionally involved because they're, they're being influenced by how tense are the stakes and how, how much release are you giving? Remember, you don't always have to give complete release either, right? Like that bomb, I could have made it where she cut it, and then the clock stopped, right? And then it goes back up blah, 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 to five, to 10. And then she's like, all right, I got to run. So then she runs. And now there's a new tension. So it's a, blah, blah, blah. you could, I could have done that, right? I could, uh, whatever the case may be. And then it could explode. And then like last minute, we find out that she actually survived, right? So you remember, you, you can create rhythms with it, okay? But like I did with mine, there was a higher stake and tension in the first beat uh, than the third beat where uh, the new tension was current. So keep that in mind when you're working with tension and release, all right? And again, you don't always want your release to be complete. You could have moments, smaller releases, bigger releases, whatever they, uh, so. Um, one of the actionable exercises you can do for tension and release is when you look at your story, <clears throat> look at what you're writing, or you could write examples and, you know, like I just did, you know, I just, it's just practice, right? Um, you look at your stuff and then you have first you have to obviously identify what is working, what isn't working. So if it feels if it feels like just a bunch of things are happening, but nothing is happening, uh, you might be lacking some tension or release. Uh, so you take your scene and you have to say to yourself, what are the stakes here? And am I placing the characters into an emotional state in influence uh in reaction to those stakes all right uh you have to always maintain a a balance between presenting the facts to the reader so they understand what the stakes are uh the alfred hitchcock if the audience knows the bomb is under the table but the the people don't now we have set the logical and informational aspect of the scene. There is a bomb. It has five minutes remaining. And then we pull out from the bomb and you could do this in a novel too, right? You could tell the audience there's a bomb and then they pull out and then they see two people sitting at a table and they're just having a conversation about their day. So for them, there is low stakes because they don't know they're in danger. But for you, the reader, there's high stakes because you know, they are in danger. Right. And then if they leave the place, the tension is released. Uh, if they find the bomb, now they're on the same page as you with the tension. And now it's their job to figure out what to do. Do they run? Do they stay? And now they're making choices. All right. So that's something to keep in mind when you're looking at your scenes. Are you informing the reader and and or the characters enough to set the stakes? And then how are your characters reacting to that emotionally and what choices are they making? Okay. 
So again, an example of a choice, by the way, uh, a lot of times people are like, well, if they, whatever they do is a choice, right? Like if they go through the door, they, they, they made a choice. Um, this is an example of a choice. Sarah, <clears throat> sorry, Sarah grabbed one of the thicker wires and placed her cutter around it. That is not a choice. This is plot. She needs to cut a wire. This is choice. She closed her eyes and the clock reached single digits, which means that she's hesitating. Eight, seven, six. Her hand refused to let her cut it. She's battling the choice. She's battling the plots to have her cut the wire. Her initial choice, the door on the left, is being questioned inside her. And we are watching her process that without telling the audience. We are showing the audience her challenging her initial uh, uh, intuition to choose the left door. <clears throat> okay. And then she finally looks down and doesn't even think about it. She just grabs the wire to its left and cuts it. So she grabs another wire and then the bright number. So this is an example of a character dealing with something emotionally and making an actual choice because the plot dictates that she has to cut the wire to stop the bomb because the plot is she is going to cut the wire and stop the bomb. The story is that we're going to let her process it. She's going to have, she's going to, she's going to challenge her own position of, I grabbed the right wire. She's going to emotionally be trying to work through it while the clock. So we're showing her in a very calm state, by the way, she's, she's nervous. She has shaking hands. She's, you know, she, she's worried. We, we got that, but she's also showing resilience. And then she just cuts that wire and then she just collapses. And that's an example of not only showing them making a choice or battling going through. This is the this is what challenging a position looks like. Her original position was this is the wire. And then she's like, wait a minute, this might this might not be the wire. Let me take another couple seconds to think about it. And then she opened her eyes. She's like, no, there's no way. This is the wire. Let me go for the next wire. And that creates choice. All right. Final thoughts. Boop. This is a quick final thoughts, by the way. This technique is more than just writing, uh, you know, tension and uh, release. It's the heartbeat of the narrative. Like a skilled composer, you're orchestrating the emotional journey of your readers, guiding them through the moments of breathless anticipation and well-earned reprieve that stems from your characters making choices, uh, uh, responding to things emotionally. But more importantly... You're not going to master this technique uh, overnight, okay? Even if you're good at it now, I'm not a master at it, and I've been writing for over 20 years. You're always going to be learning. If you could accept that, it's not about being a master. It's about always wanting to be better. If you're into sports and you know who Michael Jordan is, he was the GOAT, the greatest of all time, and still... He was in the gym every day and still he pushed himself every day. So just because he was at the top didn't mean he couldn't keep going. So when you look at tools like this, if you think you're great at it, or even if you think you're good at it, remember you could always be better, but it's not about being the best and it's not about mastering it. It's about always putting work into it, always honing your skills, always practicing, always trying new things. If you start getting comfortable with something, Start breaking those habits and start trying other things. Resist what you know and challenge what you know, okay? Uh, because you're always trying to improve. Um, and, and, and ultimately, this technique, it will take practice. It takes mindfulness, and it takes a willingness to experiment. As you continue to write, pay attention to the natural rhythms in your own life, the buildup of stress before a deadline, the relief after completing a task, and of course, the sudden jolt of an unexpected text. All right, these everyday experiences can inform you and your craft on how to build that tension and release by how you experienced it. Are you waiting for something? Is it, do you, did the bill go through? Did the bill not go through? All right. Have you ever gone to pay for food and you're like, I know. My account might not have the money in it, but I'm starving. Please go through. And it, oh, good. It went through. Attention. Don't be afraid to push your boundaries. 
and, and your understanding of tension and release. And while uh, we've discussed some of the, uh, you know, the, the processes of writing tension and release and how it could come off as things are happening, but nothing is happening. Remember that these rules in writing aren't meant to be necessarily understood. Um, or I should say, they're meant to be understood. You're meant to learn them. But the only reason you're trying to learn them is so you can bend and even break the rules. So the more you understand the rule and the more you play with the rule, really growth comes from being able to bend and break those rules. All right. So don't feel like even the way I'm explaining a rule, don't feel like this is the be it's this way or the highway. No, this is just one way of approaching it. But ultimately, you need to find what works for you and then learn and understand it to the point where you're able to bend and break. Because at the end of the day, you got to learn to trust your instinct uh, for whatever your narrative needs, right? But most importantly, keep your readers in mind when making those choices with your instinct and for your narrative. They're not just passive observers, but active participants in the emotional journey you're creating. This is what tension and release does. It can't just be about, oh, they're doing stuff. It can't be Zack Snyder film. It can't just be like Aquaman is drinking. And he's basically shirtless and he's walking on rocks towards the ocean. And then the ocean splashes up and you're like, that's an amazing shot. But like, why? What's going on? Right. So that's a that is an example of something is happening, but nothing is happening. Is that shot in uh, uh, the Justice League with Aquaman? So in writing, even though you trust your instincts, and, uh, you know, when you're writing the narrative you want to write, you also have to think about the audience and how you are moving them or emotionally manipulating their experience so they can actually immerse themselves into what's happening and be a part of that journey up and down. Um, but ultimately, challenge yourself. OK. All right. OK. You want to experiment with different pacing, unexpected sources of conflict or unconventional resolutions. Every scene, every paragraph, even every sentence is an opportunity to engage your readers emotions. Work on elevating your skill level and craft uh, to better control tension and release uh, in the lifelong journey of uh, being a writer. So uh, do what you can. Right? All right. There you go. Boom. Next video in the series. Next video in the series, we're going to explore themes, how to weave thematic elements into your plot, characters, and world building to create depth and meaning to your story. Um, I have a, uh, a very important uh, question. Uh, how do you manage tension and release in your stories right now? Have you ever struggled to find that balance? Uh, drop your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Let us learn from each other. You know, if you haven't done so already, please hit that bell icon and the subscribe button. And, uh, you know, if you found today's information helpful and uh, you like what you saw, give me some thumbs up. Also, uh, this shirt is for sale in the store, as is my cups. I feel like the People like this cup. My characters made me do it. That is all available in the store. All that helps me uh, keep doing this channel. Because uh, this is my job. You know, I write. And uh, I do YouTube. Uh, you know, to keep myself from going crazy. That's it. That's it. I'm old. I can't go out there and work. This is working. All right. That's what happens. That's what happens. All right, what's happening? Oh, <laughs> I got to do the goodbye. All right, as always, truth in action, peace and harmony, and keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Bye.